Okay, in this particular example, we have a ball and socket at A, one bearing at B, and then a smooth surface at C. So given a ball and socket, because ball and socket, you can rotate it about any axis you want, but you cannot move it. So that's why I put AX, AY, and AZ in there as three reaction force. On the bearing itself at point B, you can only rotate it about Y axis. Because you can rotate about Y axis, there's going to be no force on the Y, but there's going to be the BX and BZ, and also MX and MZ. I'm going to talk a bit of second why I removed those. And then at point C, FC is a smooth surface. The reason that we did not consider reaction moment because the system is aligned. Also in the problem, they say that the system, they are set up such that the system is aligned. Now, when I have my diagram, basically that's all you need to do before you can set up your problems. Without this diagram, you cannot set up your problem. So F of F, X, sum of f of x is zero, f of y is zero, f of z equal to zero, moment about x axis, moment about y axis, and moment about z axis. You overall you have six equations and six unknowns. Now on the x, so I have the ax, this one, plus bx, ax plus bx equal to zero. We don't have any other forces on the x. That's it. On the y. I have a y this way, and then if I look into it, I cannot find any other one. So a y is zero, very easy to find. On the z, I have a z, which is going down, so that's why I put minus a z, minus 900, plus b z, plus f c equal to zero. This is f c, b z, 900, and a z. Now, the fun parts begin when I want to do the moment about different axes. If you remember, we had a whole lecture about the scalar approach. And I like the scalar approach for doing 3D moment because you don't want to get to the cross product with so many unknowns, right? Now, if I want to do moment about X axis, which is right now here, so let me just draw on it. If I want to do moment about X axis, which is this one, come back. Um, okay, if I want to do moment about the x-axis, these three forces, they are on the x-axis. So there is no moment from this three force, but I'm going to have a moment from this force of 900. So the force of 900 about the x-axis, this is going to go clockwise, and the distance for that would be 900 times 0 0.4. So about the x-axis, I have minus 900, because it's clockwise, that's why I put minus here. I have minus 900 times 0 0.4. The next force is the force BZ. The force BZ is going to go, again, if you look at the direction of it, it's going to go counterclockwise, and the distance for that would be 0 0.8. So plus 0 0.8. How about BX? BX is parallel to X axis, so no moment from that. I move on to the next one, which is BFC. FC is on the Z. We do moment about the x-axis, our distance will be on the y. Again, remember, all these three forces, they were in z, and the distance was in y. I can actually see it myself, but we clearly see that. So the force Fc, the perpendicular distance for that will be 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4, which is going to be 1.2. Then I set up my first equation. I want to do moment about y-axis instead of my second equation. So... Uh, consider the y-axis as the length of this shaft. Okay, this is the y-axis. Now, if I do moment about y-axis, these three forces, AX, AY, AZ, they are already intersecting the y-axis. No moment from them. BX, BZ, no moment from them either. So I would be ended up at the 900 and the FC. The forces are on Z. I do moment about X. So I do moment about y, distance will be on x. The 900 is going to go counterclockwise. So it's going to go clockwise. And then the fc is going to go counterclockwise. So 900 times this distance, which is 0 0.4. And then I have the fc times 0 0.6. And that's how we ended up with 
the sum of moment about y. The last equation is moment about z. And that's a little bit tricky. Um, do you have anything you want to add? Yes, please. So the x is always going to be in the uh, like opposite of the values of the force, right? Yeah, I'll cover it like in a bit. Let me just to finish the recording. So on this um, sum of moment about z, so on the z, if you look at this is the this is the z axis. So the z axis is here, right? A x a y z, no moment from it. B z nine hundred and f c, they are already parallel to the z axis. We have one force left, and that's b x. So b x times whatever is that is zero, right? And that's how we ended up with bx is zero. And then you can actually solve the rest of this equation to find the rest of it. From this equation, you can find fc. Once you found fc, you put it here to find bz. And then once you have bz, you can find az from this equation. And then you are all set with these six unknown than six equations. So let, let me jump into one more problem. Uh, in this problem, I have uh, a bearing at point A. So I'm going to read through it to see what types of bearing is that. It's a journal bearing, right? So for a journal bearing, it can move and it can rotate. So you can see that along this axis, which is y-axis, I wouldn't have any reaction because the shaft can rotate and it can move. Right, all your reaction is AX and AZ and MX and MZ. So you have two more there because the bearing restricts it from any rotation. So I wouldn't be able to make any rotation. Now, at the same time, I have two cables. One cable is going to go from B to D, the other cable go from B to C. So I have one, two. So T1. T2, AZ, MZ, MX, AX. So four here plus two, six unknowns. And makes sense. We are in 3D, six unknowns, six equations. So we can solve them. But again, in this case, when you have cable, it becomes a little bit tricky because that cable, you have to find the direction of it and then you have to find the component of it. In this case, one cable is go from B to D. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find the unit vector for BD and unit vector for BC. I call UBC, UBD. Again, you already know how to find their coordinates. You subtract them from each other and find the U of it. Once you found the UBC, okay, UBC, I call that T1. But how much of T1 is in the direction of X, Y, and Z? So once I found T1, I'm going to multiply this by T1. Right, I multiply UBC by T1. If I do that, if I multiply this equation by T1, that's what I'm going to get. I'm going to get 0 minus 0 0.6 T1 here plus 0 0.8 T1. So once you've got your component, you put them on your free body diagram here. And same thing for the next cable. I did it for the next cable. I found the direction of it. Then I multiply that by T2. I put this component on this point of reactions. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about, instead of having the two cables that I didn't know where the direction of, I'm talking about mini components for each cable. And I already know the direction, where they are going to. Same story. Some of f of x, some of f of y, some of f of z. You can set up your equations, and then you will be able to uh, solve them. The only tricky part for this problem is that you should be able, again, First, you have to start thinking of finding their unit vector, finding their direction, putting the component back in there. Like for instance, minus 0 0.61, I put it back one because it was minus. And then in the other component, 0 0.6 T2, I put it in the positive way. The two components for T1, like 0 0.8 T1 and 0 0.8 T2, both of them were going positive, so I put them on the positive side. And then you have to put them on the point of action. In this case, is the point B is uh, the point of action. So uh, again, once you have this diagram ready, the equation are not very difficult. So for instance, AX, okay, what are the forces on the X? Nothing. AX is zero. That's it. On the Y, 
I have, uh, okay, there's no a y there, right? On the y, I have these two forces. I have 0 0.61, 0 0.62. So the T2 is the positive, the T1 is negative. So by set up the equation, I'm going to get T1 is equal to T2. And then there was like 350 there. There's 350 force here. I forgot that was there on the diagram. So it would be 0 0.6 T2 plus 350 minus 0 0.61 equal to 0. Now on the Z, you have 800 going down. So minus 800 plus these two components, 0 0.81, 0 0.82, and then minus AZ. And that location of A equal to 0. The sum of the moment about x axis, and we are getting to the tricky part of uh, doing moments. So the x axis is here. That's the x axis. So ax, az, there is no moment, but I already have mx here, right? I should consider that. Uh, these two forces, 0 0.61, 0 0.62, they are intersecting with the x axis. If you continue the line of action, they intersect the x-axis, no moment from it. The 800, this is going to go clockwise. The force is on the z, moment is about uh, x-axis, distance will be on the y, so it will be 800 times 6. We can calculate that. Then the force 350, that's already intersecting with the x-axis. Then I have two forces up there, 0 0.81, 0 0.82. For these two forces, they are on the z, moment about x, the distance will be on the y. In this case, the distance will remain at 6. And then that's how I found moment about the x-axis. You can repeat this process for uh, the rest of your axis.